So if you follow my Twitter, my Mastodon, my YouTube stories, anything like that, you might have noticed I've been having a little bit of data problems. I am terrible at managing my own data. So last Tuesday was a Tuesday like any other Tuesday. I recorded some videos, I edited those videos, and basically I was sitting down getting ready to relax for the night. And I was looking through my videos directory and noticed a little bit of a problem. One of the files in there didn't have an icon in my file manager, which isn't the most unusual thing. Sometimes the icons just don't get loaded. So I tried to open up the file and it wouldn't open. The only thing I got was an error message saying structure needs cleaning. And I tried to go and open up that folder in something like Caden Live and the folder wouldn't even open. Now, while the problem is only just starting to get serious, it's not a problem that just came out of nowhere. I've been dealing with this in some form or another for the past couple of months. So most of the time when I boot my system, everything boots fine. Other times, it takes a really long time to boot, and then before it gets to the login screen, systemd errors out. Now, systemd is doing exactly what it should be doing. It's running fsck in the background, the file system check application, and when it does that, it returns an error. Failed to start file system check on my home petition. Now, this is a pretty big problem because this is indicative of some level of file system corruption. Not necessarily drive failure, but data is not in a consistent state. Inodes sometimes might not have names attached to them. Basically, things are not in a way that you want to be using them. Sometimes this happened multiple boots in a row, sometimes it didn't happen for an entire week. It seemed basically entirely random. Now, the way I actually get into my system from that point is to run FSCK to repair the file system. Now, when you do that repair process, it is going to be removing all of those files that are corrupted. Now, most of the time the corrupted files are things I just didn't care about. They're like corrupted cache files and Things like this. If I lose those, it doesn't really matter. But this time, everything changed. Now this is reason one I'm terrible at managing my data. Back when this originally started happening, I posted about it over on Twitter and Mastodon. And someone warned me that this was going to become a serious problem. They're like, hey, this might be indicative of petition failure, drive failure, anything like that. And I just kept putting the problem off and off and off and waiting for it to finally bite me. And this time it actually did. Now, it's also very important to note another reason why I'm bad at managing my data. I didn't have a full system backup. I did have a backup of things that were actually like really critical, like critical tax documents and crypto keys and things like that. So I wasn't going to lose everything and be in a pretty bad state. But I didn't have a backup of things that were churning fairly quickly, like my videos. Back to the main story. The problem occurred and I thought it was just a single file. It wasn't a single file, so I should have gone and checked over the rest of my video files before doing a reboot. I should have done like a full system backup or at least a backup of the video files just to make sure that anything that is still probably fine is going to be fine after doing a reboot. I did the reboot because maybe that file's not like a real issue. It, sometimes files just act weirdly and if I do a reboot then everything's going to be fine. And as so happens, every so often, that file system check error showed up again. So I ran through that file system repair as I normally would, expecting everything to basically be well. And when I got into my system, it seemed like that was pretty much the case. But just for good measure, I went and checked in my video folder just to make sure that one file was going to be gone. And that one file was definitely gone. But I also noticed other things in my folder as well. And a podcast I just had sitting around in my recording folder wasn't there. This was a two hour recording that I hadn't uploaded yet. I hadn't done anything with yet. It was just sitting there waiting to be worked on. Completely gone. 
And that's when I started to panic. So I then checked all of the folders for all of my individual videos and all but the two I recorded today and one random video from like two or so months ago that hadn't been uploaded yet is all that survived. So in that process, I had lost five full recordings and a podcast. But weirdly enough, as it so happens with file system corruption, not everything was gone. So two of the like split recordings for one of the videos was there, not enough to rebuild the entire video, but two random ones were there. Also, all of the thumbnail GIMP files were still present, so I didn't need to remake the thumbnails, which I guess you could call a silver lining, but it only takes me about five or ten minutes to do so. But when this issue happened, I checked over basically everything to see what was missing. I couldn't find anything else. The really big thing I was worrying about was my video notes. Losing a video recording is one thing. I can re-record a video though. Losing the notes I used to actually make the video, that is a much bigger deal. And if that happened, I would have just ended up trashing the video. But if I lost notes for my other videos and like ideas for other videos, there's like thousands of things on this list. And that's not something I'm recovering if I don't have a proper backup. But at this point, the damage was done, so I can't exactly put the problem off anymore. Also, more problems could happen at any point in the future, so I have to deal with this basically as quickly as possible. First problem though, I don't have a backup SATA drive that I can just wipe all the data off. Second problem, the drives already in my system are way too small to actually hold the data. And third problem, all of these issues happened after the shops were closed. So I had no way to get a new drive that day. And Australia doesn't have like crazy US shipping. So at most, if I ordered something online, it would be here in like two or three days, which is not something I'm dealing with. So luckily I had a temporary solution. And this is that solution. This is a uh, two terabyte external mechanical drive that I bought maybe six, seven years ago, back when getting these drives was still like some amount of expensive. And you know, it's gonna hold the data, but being a USB drive, it's gonna take a while. And I couldn't make a full system backup. It would have taken me somewhere in the range of like, 20 or 30 hours to actually do that. So I backed up basically what I could. My videos, my stream music, my stream overlays, podcast overlays, things that I just really didn't want to lose, and just any other thing that I could copy over to the drive in some reasonable amount of time, just in case, you know, the drive was going to fail and I was going to lose everything if I didn't. So I did that, I tried to sleep, and I had possibly the worst sleep I've had in many, many years. I was very stressed out, and it was not fun. But we got through the night, and when I woke up, everything still seemed to be fine. It wasn't good, it was in the same bad state that it was in before. So from there, I went to go and buy a new drive. Now, in South Australia, we don't really have that much in the way of PC hardware stores. The big store here is called MSY. Now, the MSY nearest to me isn't this like crazy micro center or other fancy North American store. This is this little hole in the wall store that barely has any stock. When I went there to buy a two terabyte hard drive, I was like, hey, what do you guys have in stock for two terabyte drives? And he said, we have one drive. What do you mean you have one drive? It's a two terabyte mechanical drive. This isn't exactly an uncommon part. And I wanted to go buy a one terabyte drive to act as a backup drive for my videos and things like that, which I'm still going to do. But the problem is they didn't have any. They had literally zero one terabyte drives. The one silver lining in this entire scenario is I feel very justified by constantly saying 
always have a separate home and separate root petition. So my petition scheme currently looks like this. We have my SDB1 that contains my home petition. I have my NVMe drive that has my root. I have the swap there as well. And then my boot, which I'd normally just don't keep mounted. And ignore this SDA over here. This is my original drive. Now, if I had my home and my root in the exact same petition, if something goes wrong there, this is a problem in my root petition, but something going wrong in my home is really easy to fix. All I do is spin up a new petition on the new drive and then mount it to the point the old drive was mounted at, go and make a home directory again, and then copy the data over. And nothing else needs to be done. Doing that initial setup process is maybe like five minutes of work. The thing that actually takes a long time is copying the data over. And it's not necessarily copying the really large files because there are some files in there that are like multiple gigabytes and there were a couple of games that were copied and things like that. Those are not the big deal. The big deal is all of the little files because the amount of overhead for setting up that copy is basically the same. So when you have a thousand metadata files in a Git repo, that becomes a problem. So it ended up taking about seven or so hours to copy all of the 1.3 terabytes. But the estimation for how long it was going to take made no sense. Initially, it started at five hours, like, okay, whatever, it's going to take five hours. Then it instantly dropped down to two hours, like, okay, great, it's going to take two hours, I can actually record videos today. And then it stayed on two hours for five hours. It's like, oh, okay, so what is this? This makes no sense. So I pretty much just spent that day doing Japanese study, doing some guitar practice, doing my workout, reading a book, chilling out, and not doing what I wanted to be doing. Because I can't exactly record videos when my entire drive is being taken up by copying this data, and I can't do much else productive either. So, yeah, I just, I just... I just dealt with it, and then the rest of the week was very stressful because I still had to record all of the rest of the videos and not just the rest of the videos. I had to re-record the videos that I had lost. So that week, I think I recorded nine or so videos, and six of them were my normal videos. Three were the... I can't do three. Three was the videos that I had to, like, redo. I still have two of them left over. So this week, I'm going to redo those. I guess another silver lining is some of those videos I had to redo are videos that kept getting pushed back and back and back that I still want to upload, but were recorded quite a while ago. So not really at the current quality I would like them to be at, so re-recording them brings them in line with the way I currently make videos. And over the past week, the new drive has been absolutely rock solid. Usually when the drive ends up dying, it dies way later down the line or within that first like couple of day period. So I think I am pretty safe at this point. So far, I've not deleted the data off of the old drive and I'm not really sure what I'm actually going to do with it. So I've run SmartCTL to just check over the drive and see if there's anything that is like hey, this is instantly going to be a problem, and no errors are being reported, and I haven't done enough of a dig into these numbers to really say whether what's going on is unfixable, if it's a problem with the drive, or whether it would be safe to keep using. But possibly, if I get around to it, I might do a video going over what a lot of this information actually means and what you should be looking out for. But right now, if anyone has more of an indication of what I should be looking at here, I would love to know and I would love to see some resources. So to make sure this problem doesn't happen again, going forward, I'm going to make sure I have a backup of all of my videos. If not a local backup, at least I should have been doing a cloud backup. I don't know why I wasn't at least doing that. It's a couple of dollars a month at absolute most. I can host it myself or I can just pay someone else to do it. It's not a difficult process. 
I just wasn't doing it. So let me know down below if you've had any bad experiences with bad data practices, whether they're your own or someone else doing it, I would love to know. So if you like this video, remember to go and like the video. And if you really like the video and you want to become one of these amazing people over here, go check out my Patreon, subscribe to the pay linked in the description down below. I've got a podcast called Tech Over Tea. I've got a gaming channel called Brody Robertson Plays. That's going to be it for me, and I'm out.